Okay, so let's continue looking at structures of graphs. And now we want to look at parts of a graph. So we want to define what it means to be a subgraph. So look, for example, at this graph. So in general, the definition is the following. A subgraph of a graph is a graph whose vertices sit in this graph G and the edges come from the graph G. So in this graph, let me, to be careful, label all the vertices and also label the edges. So this has a subgraph that is the following, the rectangle with vertices x, y, c, and edges e, f, and g. So this is a graph. Its vertex set is a subset of the vertex set of my original graph, and so is its edge set. So uh, notice that a subgraph in particular has to be a graph. For example, uh, I cannot take, say, just the vertex x and the edge e. This is not a graph because an edge cannot just go into empty space. It has to end in a vertex. So if I want x and e to be in my subgraph, at the very least, I have to add the vertex z. And so that is what it means to be a subgraph. And sometimes we uh, are a bit sloppy and we say that h is a subgraph of g. What we mean is that our graph g has a subgraph isomorphic to h. So for example, this graph g has subgraph h, which is just two disconnected uh, nodes. Why is that? Well, because this, if I take these two vertices and not the edge and not the third vertex, then I will get something isomorphic to h, that is why H is a subgraph of G. So what are various ways to construct subgraphs of a graph? So what you can do, let's start with an example. And what seems to be my favorite example is this triangle graph. So the graph, let me be very careful, has vertices U, V, and w and edges well i only will name two edges so let's call this edge e and this edge f okay so what can i do one thing i can do is i can delete an edge and then i get the graph g minus the edge so if this is my g if this is my example then doing this to the example will give me this graph. Exactly the same thing, but now one edge is missing. So I can also delete a set uh, of edges. So if F is the set consisting of both the edge E and the edge F, then the remaining graph from my example will be this guy, where both edges now have vanished. In the same way, I can delete a vertex of the graph. So suppose I want to delete the vertex V. So I have here my graph exactly as before, but now the vertex V is gone. Well, this is not a graph. Why is that? Because remember, edges are supposed to be pairs of vertices. 
and this these edges somehow do not go to any vertex they go out to empty space so i cannot do that uh, i have to erase these edges so i cannot just erase a vertex i have to erase all the edges that connect to this vertex so this is g minus v i have deleted the vertex v and all the edges that are necessary so that the result is still a reasonable graph. And I can do the same with a set of vertices. So if my set of vertices is the vertices V and W, then I have to remove V and W, but also all the edges that are incident to V and W, and all the edges are incident to V and W. So what I get from G minus S is just the vertex u. All the edges are gone because when I remove v and w, I'm removing endpoints from all edges. So these deletions of edges or vertices with their incident edges are natural ways to construct new graphs that are subgraphs of the graph I started with. Another useful construction for graphs is contraction. Contraction is a bit more tricky than removal of edges. So let's look at the same example. Remember, I had this graph with vertices u, v, w, and let's just label one edge e. So this is a graph. Now, in general, what is removal? What is contraction? Contraction of g by e, written in this fashion. It's the graph obtained in two steps. First, I remove the edge I'm concerned with, and then I glue together the vertices that uh, this graph had the edge between. So in this case, I'm not just removing E, I'm gluing together uh, U and V. So if this is my G, then my G contracted E will look like this. So here I have W and here I have a new vertex X. So this happened in two steps. Step one was to remove the vertex E and step two was to glue together the two vertices. I removed the edge E and I need to glue together these ones so I get one edge, uh, one vertex here. And the rest is the same. So this is contraction. Now, question for you. Is G contracted by E a subgraph of G in general? Is, the, is contraction a way to give me a subgraph? Can it ever be the case if it's not the case in general? I would like you to think about these questions. And the answer is, it is not a subgraph in general, but sometimes it can be, and I will leave it to you to construct examples when this happens. Another notion that is important in graphs is complements. So, Philosophically speaking, a complement of a graph is the graph with the edges that were not there instead of the edges that are there. So, for example, if G is the following, and this only makes sense for simple graphs. So here I have vertices X, Y, and Z. Then what does the definition say? The definition says that the complement is the simple graph with the same vertex set but where you put the edges where there were no edges in the original graph and you remove the edges of the original graph. So the complement has an edge precisely where the original graph doesn't have an edge. So in this case, G bar will be same vertices, X, Y, and Z. And now the edge goes between Y and Z because that's where I had a missing edge in G, so to speak. That is the complement of 
the graph. So a question for you that I would like you to pause the video and think about what is G bar bar? What's the complement of uh, the complement? I will in fact not give you the answer. I will leave this uh, to you to think about for a while. 